Okay, the pre-tribulation view says that there are no events before the rapture to take place. The dead in Christ rise pre-trib, and the alive in, rise, in Christ rise pre-trib. It's an escapist point of view. Scripture teaches that there is one resurrection of the dead just prior, prior to the millennium of the just and the unjust at the same time, one gathering just prior to the millennium. Now, if we can know when the dead are raised, we can know when we are gathered. I believe that this is accurate. You'll see that there's a resurrection of the tares and the dead in Christ first. Then shortly after that, we get our glorified bodies. We are alive and remain, get our glorified bodies, and we are gathered into the new Jerusalem. Then we go into the millennium, a thousand years of peace. And then after a thousand years, then there's a resurrection of the unjust, the second death. Then we go into the new heaven and the new earth. All right, let's look at the resurrection of the just. Luke 14, 12. Then said he also to him that bade him, When thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made unto thee. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the blind, the lame, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. All right, we're continuing to look at the resurrection. John 5, 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. And they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. In other words, the just and the unjust are resurrected to death together. That's what the Bible says. In other words, that does away with the pre-trib rapture because the pre-trib rapture says that the good guys are taken out, then seven years later, the bad guys are taken out. This says they both take place at the same time. If we know when the dead are raised, we can know when we are gathered. We're still investigating that. John eleven twenty four. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said unto him, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Now I've got a question. If Martha, that sat at the feet of Jesus, hearing him teaching, why would she say this if Jesus was teaching a pre-trib rapture? Why would she say, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day? Didn't she just say that the resurrection is the last day? If she said it wrong, then wouldn't he have corrected her? The very last day is when the resurrection is. And the dead in Christ arise first. You know what this is saying? There is no pre-trib rapture. There it is. And I made lots of points to that fact. What can the sun, the moon, and stars and heavens teach us about the timing or the return of Jesus? Isaiah 13, 10. And by the way, this is one of the most talked about events in all of Bible prophecy. I believe there's like 14 different places you find this discussed. This is the very end. This is when Jesus returns. This is what it looks like when he returns. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give her the light. The sun shall be dark and it is going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. I will punish the world for their evil. This is when he's returning as a righteous judge. And the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. And will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Even the man of uh, the golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth. Shall remove out of a place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts. And in the day of his fierce anger. Again he returns one time. It's at the end. And no one gets saved. Isaiah thirteen fourteen. I'll go to 17. Behold, I will stir up the meads against them. I'm going to skip that. That gets too deep. Isaiah 24, 19. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean, dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a dunk. This is what it looks like when Jesus returns. This is not what your pre-tribbers picture they give you. Reel to and fro like a drunkard. It shall rise and not fall again. Verse 22. And they, the tares, shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. The moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed. This is when they are gathered. They will be gathered as prisoners in a pit. And that pit is called Armageddon, the valley of Jezreel. Isaiah 30, 26. Moreover, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun. The light of the sun shall be sevenfold in the light of the days 
of seven days. In other words, I believe that Revelation teaches that the sun will go seven times hotter, then it will go out. Just like when you go into a room, you flip the switch, and the light gets really bright, bright and then it goes out. The sun is going to nova. That's what that's saying. The sun is going to get seven times hotter, then it's going to go out. That's one of the signs just prior to and on the day of Jesus' return. In the day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people, in other words, they're healed, they're clean, they're washed clean, Jeremiah 50 verse 20 also says that. And this is going to be a time of his burning anger. <clears throat> this is when with the breath an overflowing stream, he'll reach in the midst of the neck of the to sift the nations. This is when he brandishes his sword. This is when the, 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 the word comes out of his mouth and destroys all of the terrials. Terrors. This is when Israel is cleaned up. I just said that. And I'm going to skip by that. This is when the sun and the moon are no more a light by day, neither brightness shall the moon give any light. This is when the sun will no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light. In other words, when the, the sun goes out, Jesus literally is the light of the world. All of this is a picture of what it looks like when he returns. Ezekiel 32, 2. Son of man, take up a lamentation for Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Go on down. And when I shall put thee out, I'll cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud and with the moon will not give her light. All the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee and set darkness upon thy land, saith the Lord God. All pictures of when he returns. Joel 2.10, the earth shall quake before them. The heaven shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. The, sun, the stars shall withdraw their shining. <coughs> Excuse me, the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. And he will turn even to me with all your heart and with fasting and weeping and mourning. This is when the Jews finally receive Jesus toward the very end. And I will show wonders, Joel 2.30, in the heavens and in the earth, blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Joel 3.14, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision we've been talking about the whole time. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. The stars shall withdraw their shining. And he'll utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens of the earth shall shake. And the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of, child, of the children of Israel. In other words, this is when the Jews know Jesus. Matthew 24, 29. After the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened. The moon will not give light. The stars shall fall from heaven. The powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angel with a great sound of a trumpet, the last trumpet, and he shall gather his elect after he has gathered up the tares. <clears throat> Once again, when Jesus returns, no one gets saved. Luke 21, 25. And there shall be signs in the sun, moon, and the stars, and upon the earth's distress of the nation with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. And we read that scripture, but look at the next scripture. It's associated with... The powers of heaven shall be shaken, the Son of Man returning in a cloud, and this is when your redemption draweth nigh. I submit to you that returning of Jesus, for those that do know their scriptures, that are looking for him, it's not going to be a secret. We are going to see it is getting closer and closer. The birth pains are getting closer and closer and closer. Revelation 6, 12. And beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. Again, we see a shaking of the earth, the same events. See, we're reading scriptures from all through the Bible. This is just not one area. All through the Bible, and it says the same basic events. The sixth seal, earthquake, sun, moon, blood, stars, heaven. Same thing. Revelation 6.15. This is when they hide themselves in the dens and the rocks and the mountains. By the way, why do they hide themselves in the dens and the rocks and the mountains? It's because there's great hail or great um, meteorites hitting the earth. Why do they hide themselves in the rocks of the mountains? Why not the rocks of the valleys? Could it be that there's water all over the earth? Because the earth, the high places have already begun to go down. The low places are already begun. See, the earth is reverting back to the way it was back in the days of Adam.